Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, for more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, the product comes along with education. So you get a Bookmap educational course. It's a four-part course. Uh, each part is an hour long. Uh, and then uh, there's follow-up uh, every day uh, in an advanced order flow webinar, okay? So uh, uh, it uh, uh, supports the content from the educational course, uh, but you just get to see it in the live market. So learn about Bookmap uh, and then see it in the live market, okay? So let's take a look at uh, the website here quickly uh, and um, just go through it. Okay, just uh, scroll down. You'll see the intro video here, uh, a couple minutes long. Uh, a bit further down, information about Bookmap uh, and um, uh, NASDAQ total view. So uh, we also connect to U.S. equities. Uh, and then a bit further down. So uh, let's just define what Bookmap is. Okay, we are a visualization software trading platform. Okay, we are not a data provider. Okay, you will need to provide your own data. Uh, except for the uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, at the moment, we connect to GDAX, uh, and uh, we have an offering that uh, allows free connectivity. Um, okay, so uh, you can see there's some other platforms in here as well, like Ninja, uh, TTX Trader Pro, and uh, Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation. Um, we're a platform just as they are. So, uh, however, we connect via the API of these popular trading platforms. So you can connect that way if you want. Uh, else, uh, uh, and we recommend this, uh, connect directly uh, through uh, Rhythmic, CQG, Gain, IQ Feed, uh, Transact, or Dev Experts for that NASDAQ total view, okay? Um, and you'll, you'll get a little bit uh, better or cleaner uh, data, okay? So a bit further down, uh, here are the packages available. There's monthly and yearly, if you click on yearly here. Okay, uh, and um, uh, there's digital and global. Okay, so let's go through the, the differences. Okay, the digital one here, there's it's a free version, no credit card required. You only get to access one digital currency at a time. Now, it, it is real time, uh, and it is a full uh, a version of Bookmap. Okay, it's just that uh, uh, it is a... Um, uh, uh, is very limited, okay? There's also limited support, and you only get basic education. Okay, Digital Plus uh, is, um, you can look at tw 20 uh, different digital currencies from the GDAX exchange. You can also trade from the chart. Uh, you can also record and replay your data, uh, and you also get access to the advanced uh, order flow education that uh, I was describing. Okay, you also get full support. A uh, global, okay, so connecting to futures and or uh, U.S. equities, uh, then uh, then the global is the way to go. Okay, so you get everything in digital, plus you get uh, uh, connectivity or uh, support for futures and U.S. equities. You would you just need to provide your own data. Okay, uh, you also get the education and full support. Uh, global plus is everything in global, uh, but it includes this host of um, uh, add-on indicators that we put together. So one is the ability to trade right from the chart, which is an, a nice advantage uh, because you can hide uh, your orders behind high liquidity if you want or front run high liquidity uh, if you want to um, look for a higher probability of a fill. Uh, and then these proprietary indicators that we put together are for the order flow understanding the order flow, starting to identify specific players holding large uh, uh, areas of liquidity uh, imbalances here, or if they're uh, starting to get filled um, in specific areas using icebergs, okay, iceberg orders. Uh, and um, that's the, uh, the Global Plus. Now, if you want a complete um, a breakdown, you can click here. Uh, and get that. Uh, if you need a data feed, you're new to futures as well, you can get a 14-day uh, trial of many of the data feeds if you click here. Uh, if you have other questions, you can go to our FAQ uh, section here. Okay. Uh, let's see, social media. You can follow us here uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, get up-to-date information about what's going on. For example, you can see the CME due to the volatility here. 
uh, is now raising the um, uh, the uh, um, uh, initial margin, okay? Uh, and then here on the uh, uh, bookmap uh, uh, YouTube website, uh, all sorts of videos here. Uh, this is for the basic uh, education. Um, I would recommend watching these intro videos to start with, then go through some of the features and components, and then get into the um, uh, order flow uh, video snippets that you see here. Okay, there's all sorts of stuff here. Uh, these concise videos just go through the concepts uh, very quickly uh, that we go through in detail in that advanced order flow webinar, okay, that starts in about uh, uh, 23 minutes. All right. Okay, let's take a look at Bookmap uh, and what's going on. We'll take a look at the S&P 500 and uh, right off the bat, uh, see all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, high liquidity up in this area here, right into it, and we can see that a lot of transactions. So this liquidity uh, uh, filled, uh, there's going to be, uh, and we can see why the market reversed up here. Okay, this is this is the beauty here. This visualization is uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, why did why did we come up to this area? Why did we reverse? Well, because it, it they they absorbed all the all the buying pressure with high liquidity. Okay, and uh, we're starting to uh, come back down to where find high liquidity here. Okay, on the bid, okay, and it's at twenty seven hundred. Okay, the big figure here. So that's what's going on uh, currently. Now, if you're new here, you know, what are the, some of the things I'm talking about uh, and um, uh, understanding, you know, this heat map here, uh, it, you know, it starts to look kind of complex, like a lot of noise is going on here in the chart. It's actually really straightforward data. There's only three elements on this chart. Um, historical best bid and offer, the volume that traded on that historical best bid and offer with these dots, Okay, and then the uh, liquidity heat map. Okay, you see here with the the orange and yellow and white colors. And that's it. That's, that's all there is on this chart. Uh, now we do have some an add-on indicator. I'm going to take off here uh, the iceberg detector. Okay. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are new here, okay, uh, and it looks like uh, there's a couple of guys here uh, that are new. So I'll go through it um, rather briefly because there's a lot of guys that uh, uh, are not new here. So we'll get into maybe a little more of the basic understanding of order flow. Uh, and, um, but just go through what you're looking at here in Bookmap, okay, and, and some reference. Okay, so we're going to refer to a candlestick chart. Okay, here is a five-minute candlestick chart, right? And let's take off all the rest of the data here, okay, and just simplify this, and we'll go through it. Okay, here's your five minute candlestick chart. Okay, we all know what this is. It's, it, these are transactions. I mean, it's open, high, low, and close of transacted uh, contracts um, for a five minute aggregated period. Okay, uh, the problem here with this candlestick chart is the aggregation. Okay, it just goes back and forth and back and forth within the five minute period. Okay. We want to know the details of what happened within that candlestick, okay? And we don't have it here, okay? We don't know. It's it's very opaque. It's totally hidden here. Uh, we also want a lot of insight to understand, uh, like this is a breakout of a range here, basically, okay? It's trend continuation, but it broke out above this uh, kind of swing area here. And uh, uh, we want to understand the volume that traded in here, okay? Uh, obviously, it's uh, it's an up candle. Uh, pretty pretty strong breakout it looks like, uh, but uh, where where are the majority of the players? What kind of volume is it? Uh, you know um, when exactly did it trade? Okay, we want to answer all those questions and we can't right now because we don't have the data. Uh, and so uh, we're going to uh, activate a lot of the uh, uh, features here and start to show uh, how we're appearing within this five minute period here or any of these periods. Uh, number one thing here is just to turn on this historical best bid and offer. And it's a really simple thing to do. Uh, just best bid and offer. That's it. Uh, and just record that. But look at the microstructures. Okay? This is where you're going to see so much uh, and, and gain insight. Uh, is uh, look, look how it broke 
Okay, here's we see actually a couple many different structures here, and it's all disguised within this five minute these five minute periods here. Uh, but uh, there's like a little structural area down here. Here's we kind of based sideways. We broke out, came back, tested right here. Okay, where we uh, where we broke from, uh, and then continued on up. Okay, and then actually tested again uh, the bottom of this uh, structure, and then we see the breakout. Okay. None of that detail is within this candlestick chart. You just you just don't see it. So you don't really know who's in control, okay? Because it's aggregated, aggregated data, and it's 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 just not giving you the truth. Uh, it's it's hidden. So let's uh, turn on the volume now, uh, and we're going to see the transactions within these microstructural areas, okay? And it's going to give us a lot of insight here. So let's zoom into this area, okay? Uh, and uh, here, this between here and here is five minutes. Okay, this is what really occurred. Okay, we had a, a move to the downside, nice cluster of volume at the wick of this uh, uh, end of this five-minute period here. Okay, uh, and then uh, we start to rotate back up, and it closed here. Okay, but right after that close, look at the volume that started to pick up. Okay, and look at the buying. Okay, that lifted the offer here. Okay, up into above the little swing that you see in the microstructure here. Okay, so here's your microstructure line right across here. We broke down, came back up, tested, and then broke down again. Okay, uh, and uh, and then we came back up and traded and significant volume traded up above that area. Okay, look at the volume here. Okay, and look at what kind of volume it is. There's a lot of green within this area. So let's zoom into this area, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're looking at. Okay, and how simple this data is. So these are only two elements on this chart. Okay, let me clear the drawing just to make it simpler so we don't uh, get confused. Um, all right, so here's your best offer is this red line. Okay, this best bid is the green line. Here are the, here's the volume here that traded on the best offer. Okay, this is aggressive market buy orders here. They're taking liquidity off of the best offer. Okay, they're not providing liquidity. It's not like in the order book where they're providing liquidity, waiting to trade at these levels. They're not waiting here. Uh, that's why we consider it the aggressor. They're, they cross the spread and they, uh, they traded up here. Okay, uh, and they took liquidity. They didn't want to wait. And uh, that's what the, uh, the, the green dots are. Uh, the red dots are here, and that's aggressive selling. Uh, now we can zoom into these areas here, and with the S&P especially, uh, we can continue to zoom in, and we can start to break apart every single transaction, as you can see here, okay? It's not, it's not aggregated. None of this uh, uh, data is aggregated. We're down at microstructural levels here. We're looking at millions of seconds, and yet, we're showing every single market event that occurred, okay? Now, we don't trade at those levels, uh, which is fine. As I zoom back out, note how just graphically we're going to aggregate that data into a bigger bigger and bigger dot, okay? So that's what you're looking at in book map with the volume uh, and the historical best bid and offer. And as I zoom back out, okay, and let's bring up the dot size just a little bit. Okay. We start to note, look at these little areas. Ah, it's a little, little too. Let's go a little bit higher here. Oops. Okay. So it, here uh, we can start to see it. Like these little areas down here, there's no selling. Okay. There's a little bit of selling here, but look at the buying up here. Okay. I mean, very clearly, the buyers are are, uh, are in control of this area here. Well, we see the breakout here. Uh, actually, pretty nasty little swing back down, but then the buyers step right back in and then lift the offer. This is the kind of insight that you're getting between this two these two five-minute candles here. Okay, uh, and uh, it's it's important to to know. Okay, look at here's our pullback here as well, back to where they were originally buying here. Okay. So let's take off the candlestick chart now because it's not it's not really telling us much. So here's that pullback right here, okay? And you're gonna see this again and again. Uh, all right, so those are only two elements now and we're still getting amazing clarity here. 
uh, with uh, what's going on within microstructural areas and who's in control in terms of volume. Uh, let's add the third element, which is the heat map. Okay. Now, this heat map, what it's showing you here uh, is a graphical representation of liquidity uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the market. Okay, so let's go to the current market and I'll, I'll describe this. Uh, here in, in this COB column here, okay, this is the live market. Uh, it stands for current order book. Uh, you can see the, uh, these, these numbers here, they're contracts at specific price levels uh, in the S&P. Here's our price ladder here. And uh, uh, each tick we see how much liquidity is at each level. All right, now, uh, for those of you looking at a dome, we're all accustomed to it. Um, uh, you understand what the dome is. And a lot of traders will say that this is, um, you know, well, you know, I don't really uh, give much uh, uh, credence to uh, levels of liquidity because there's a lot of fake liquidity. They pull, et cetera. Uh, well, that is true. Uh, however, uh, it is um, also true that they'll stay in the book to get filled at these price levels because they want to trade and they need to stay in line uh, to, to execute, okay, if they want to trade. So we can make a distinction between real liquidity and fake liquidity very easily. And therefore, you're able to utilize your dome, okay? You're able to utilize that limit order book now and understand what, what you're looking at, okay? So if, for example, we just came up and traded into this area here, okay, let's take a look at it and we can answer this question, okay? They stayed in the book here and they started to trade into it, okay? Some of it was pulled, uh, but uh, we can use this data tip tool here. There were 500 contracts here. We get the date, the time, and what was on the ask at this price level, 510, okay? We trade in into, into it with 57 right here, okay? Uh, and then we, we go down, uh, they start to pull some, uh, and uh, it's down at 375 now, okay? and then that starts to trade, okay? In the end, all of this liquidity lined up here, I can look over directly at my um, uh, volume column here, uh, 348 traded out of those 510 that were here, okay? That is factual data. So we know that uh, larger player was getting filled up here, okay? And some of it was being pulled, but it was, uh, uh, a lot of it was uh, actually uh, transacting. We just made a distinction between real liquidity and fake liquidity, okay? Fake liquidity would be uh, uh, something like, um, uh, let's find a better example. Well, here, uh, note how we're coming up into this area here and they start pulling, okay? They actually start pulling back here from 226 contracts back down to about, uh, you know, 213. And then it's down to 165, 150, 133, okay? They have no intent to trade here. Okay, there's your distinction, all right? Now, where that's a benefit is when we start to zoom out, now we can utilize our dome on much higher time frames because we record it. Uh, we, we take that, uh, that data here and in this window, which has this window here, uh, to the right of this vertical white line. Uh, we take the data in the, in the limit order book and we paint it in the heat map. Okay, and this is your best bid and offer right now and this number is the last traded volume. So painted in the heat map, you can see where they're staying in the book here at this uh, 15 level here with a thousand contract, over a thousand contracts. Okay, we're coming right up to them. Okay, uh, and uh, we'll see if we, we get into them and we'll see if they're real or not. Okay, they may pull and they may, it may go up to 218 instead. Okay, we get, we'll answer all of those questions we, when we get up there. And that allows us to really understand the context of the market. Okay, not only of the aggressors lifting the offer here, but of, of those uh, uh, willing to sell at these levels in the auction. Okay, and um, we can see then uh, how long these guys stayed up here. Okay, this was a pretty important level at 15. Not only do they transact up here, as we can see, they're back in the market here. They want to sell again. Okay, so that's, that's giving us a lot of insight to this level is, is, is being pretty important here. Uh, all right, so that's uh, the, that third element, and you can see how uh, we can now utilize our 
uh, depth of market, our dome, on much higher time frames. So here they are down here at, uh, at 2700 uh, on the offer, uh, and they're on the bid here at 2715 and then 18 above. All right. Any questions? All right, well, let's go through a couple. Um, oh, there's a question here. Um, oh, yeah, Rick, it's the same stuff in the YM. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we I, I don't have the YM uh, up here. I have the NASDAQ. I have the Russell. I have oil. I have gold. I have the euro dollar. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, let's jump over to um, to crude oil, and we just had uh, oil inventories as well, so I can I can show you what uh, uh, the understanding really you know uh, of liquidity and um, uh, why uh, those um, uh, economic releases are, are so volatile. Okay, so here's crude, right? Look at the liquidity here in the book. Okay, we're looking at now, we're in the tens of contracts. High liquidity is up here at 62.50 with 150 contracts. Okay, a lot different. Okay, they're also down here uh, with 171 uh, at uh, 62.25. Enough volume for YM uh, since uh, Russell trades fewer contracts. Um, well, it, you're just going to use the same process uh, just for a different market. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm answering your, your question. I, I, I don't quite understand it. Um, uh, we can take a look at the Russell if you want. Okay. Uh, and you can see that look at how they're behaving here in the Russell. It's a lot different. And we're looking at much thinner market. Now we're in the tens of contracts. High liquidity is 23 contracts up here. Okay. And, and look at how this thing moves. Right, moves rather quickly. Okay, it's because there's less liquidity. Okay, when there's less liquidity, you get more volatility. Okay, really thick markets like the S&P, um, you know, they uh, they don't move as quickly, uh, and uh, it's not a bad moving market. But uh, if you look at uh, the bonds, for example, with really high liquidity there, it you know you're looking at uh, uh, just uh, uh, a few ticks. Uh, whereas this Russell, you know, will move several ticks, several points. Okay, I answered your question. Yeah, but you can still use it. I mean, uh, it's all the data is still here. Uh, you'll just have to uh, uh, apply it to your market. I mean, here, this this behavior here, look at how they were uh, uh, just, um, uh, you know, lifting the offer in this area here uh, is giving us insight. We're coming back and we just tested these guys here too. Okay. Well, if they're, you know, this is where they started buying. Okay. If they're, if they're, if they mean business, they're going to start buying again here. Okay. Uh, I don't see them uh, getting out of the trade. Uh, in fact, up, up in these areas here. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, if, if it goes against them, they're going to be caught on the wrong side and they'll probably cover down here, right? Around this uh, uh, 15, 12 area. Okay. So, you know, this will be trapped. There'll be trapped volume here. Uh, if if they initiated their initiated their trading here, uh, else uh, let's see this is their this is their chance right here to uh, to lift the offer up into fifteen fifteen, and let's see if they do it. Okay, I'm not seeing a lot of volume here trading on the at, at some of the peaks here. Okay, so I'm I'm reading the order flow. I'm reading the tape here. Uh, I know where the high liquidity target is up here, which is only eighteen contracts, but. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so we're rotating back and forth here. All right. Uh, let's see if maybe maybe they're waiting for a, kind of a break of the range here, uh, and then the, maybe they'll initiate buying again uh, and try to lift the offer up into these higher areas and test the uh, the high up here, which is uh, 15 and uh, uh, 15.30. Okay. Here they come, All right? All right, we got to get up here. That's where the high liquidity is. Now, see, now, now they're starting to lower some some of that liquidity 
uh, and then they're pulling here. So, but this guy has been staying in the in the market here at 15. Okay, so that is the target here. Okay, back up to the top of the range. We need to see follow through uh, right here, right at 1380, uh, and a nice cluster of buying uh, for this to uh, uh, lift up out of this range here. Okay, that's what we're looking for. But look at how slippery it is. It just keeps, you know, it'll it'll just move very very quickly, um, and um, uh, and they start pulling down at these areas too. So, you know, here's your intent to trade. Look at these areas here. They're, you know, they're not trading, right? Okay. So now we're down below. Okay, the swing here. Uh, you know, maybe these guys are gonna, uh, you know, if they're if they're initiating here, they're probably getting stopped out down here, or some of them for sure. Uh, and down at the bottom of a range, we can start to look at, uh, you know, some uh, uh, auction market theory. You're going to find your responsive buyers probably right here as well. Uh, unless we unless we see a lot of selling here, then we're going to rotate lower and start trending lower. Else we're going to find responsive buyers trade it right back into this range here uh, and then probably get to the other side of this range now. Okay. That's one scenario here. We got to get above the uh, point of control, which is uh, at this uh, uh, 13 area here, and we're already above it. Okay, so here's your responsive buyers lifting the uh, offer. Now it looks like we have a good chance of coming up to 15, 15, 15. Come on, guys. It's 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 not going to take that much to get up here. Um, they just they just you know it's, it exhausts out here. It's exhausting out yet again here, right? There, I don't see any buying here. Okay, so th this is moving really quickly, uh, as as you can see. But uh, uh, let's see if they bounce off the point of control of 193 contracts that traded here. That's exactly what happened. Okay, so let's get up to 15 now. This is their chance. Not necessarily finding responsive sellers, we're just finding a lack of buyers. Okay, we might find response some sellers down below that point of control here and try to drive it down. Here they come. No, it's just a it's a battle at this, uh, and you can see what's going on here, right? This is why auction market theory we we cover it. Um, uh, here's your single distribution and that's what's going on here. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, some, some good questions there, Rick. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, uh, end the webinar here. And if you're signed up, uh, uh with, um, uh, you know, book map, uh, uh, global or, or, uh, global, uh, plus, then, uh, we'll, we'll see you in the, uh, uh next webinar. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.